Hello there everybody and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4 and in this one I got 10 tips and tricks for the industrious culture. So I did my best to dive deep into the information about this culture and dissect all the wonderful things and compress it into 10 tips and tricks that hopefully will help you when you're designing your own factions or playing these guys. So let's get started. Number one is very obvious but well, I have to point it out. These guys are the kings of tankiness, all right? So you start out with a roster that comes with a shield unit on tier 1, a taunting shield unit, so they can bind people. They come with 8 physical resistance. They got a tier 3 shield unit. They got a special building that adds fortification uh, HP and more bastions onto your city. They even got a own trait, which is called bolstering, which gives them even more resistances whenever they get smacked by something. In a nutshell, the industrious culture is therefore all about defenses, defenses, defenses. This is really, it shows really quickly, but I wanted to point it out as point one. So if you want, like to go for a defensive playstyles, these guys are, as far as I've seen, the best uh, place to come to. Now, number two goes on to the less obvious things. Your scouts are something special. You got a very, very special skill. I'll show you here. The industrious culture comes automatically with the scout prospecting. So what is scout prospecting? Basically, it allows you to go into any province that's completely uninhabitable, send your scout there. It's pretty hard to find them when they're uh, sitting in the mountains. You send them into the mountain province, select that mountain province, prospect it, and you can find either artifacts, gold, or production points. You can only prospect each area once, and, well, sadly the game doesn't tell you until you have selected the province and mouse over to the prospect province thing. I really hope that this will be fixed in the future. You know, this is a little bit odd. For example, it looks like that here. It doesn't even show me that I have prospected these unless I have uh, a scout sitting on top of it. This makes this skill maybe the most finicky thing in the game currently, but it's also impressively powerful. Because you can turn every mountain range and every piece of unpassable terrain into gold production points and artifacts. This is something really, really cool about them. And as you see here, there's uh, mountains and mountain ranges everywhere. So you get a pretty good picture about what you can do there. The only downside to this is it is quite finicky and it is heavy on scouts. Also, your scouts are really good at traversing underground stuff, and they also have the ability to climb through mountains and cliffs, cliffs faster, so they are made to prospect. Just keep in mind that you can't do that on any province where you could build anything. This is exclusively for all those uninhabitable provinces, so enjoy yourself. It's pretty powerful. Number three is another thing that you can and should do with this uh, faction, and it comes from the Steel Shapers. So the bolstering effect gives you resistances whenever you get smacked. When you get smacked with physical, you get extra physical resist. If you get smacked by magical, you get extra magical resist. So far, so good. But since defense is on everything, you have access to the Steel Shapers, which transform bolstered defenses and resistances directly into HP and strengthened. So in a nutshell, this is one mechanic that you should totally use. So you're spreading out defenses with these guys and you're transforming defenses back into offensive power. And this is something that you really, really um, ought to do. Otherwise, your troops will have a hard time in keeping up with the DPS. But transforming this into the defensive traits back into offensive power with the add-on of virtual HP for a moment makes it so that the moment your dudes get smacked with the lower resistances, it gets absorbed by the temporary HP and they get their resistances back by being attacked again. It's a pretty nifty circle of pain and it works quite well, but uh, seriously, your steel shapers are extremely important for your DPS. Otherwise, you will be sitting on very, very tanky guys that deal not so much damage. Number four, let's talk about the buildings that your guys love. And it's all about quarries, quarries, quarries. Because, you know, it's again that thing, a special province improvement is available for these. I think it's the builder's quarters. Yeah, requires city tier two. And it comes with even more production income per quarry. So you build that into the center of a quarry land. 
and you're really, really happy with it. So in a nutshell, this is something you need to know beforehand or you just look it up what kind of special province improvement your culture has. But that also means that you're allocating production points like a madman. But, uh, you know, these guys aren't named industrious for no reason. So number five is going exactly into what we built up there. The fact that all your racial buildings are providing production points on me. Here you have the workers farmstead with production and food. And after that comes the grand mill with the same setup. So you have a nice combo of production and food, which makes these guys one of the best city builders in the game probably even the best because you not only have access to buildings that rack up production like crazy you also get those free fortifications and you have tanky units which makes it all in all quite painful and difficult to bust through your defenses add into the add to this the ability to build up all those battlements and things that increase the power of your fortifications even more that makes it a real pain to deal with these guys when you want to siege their city. So in defensive mode, you are quite the strongest. And therefore, these guys are very well fit for either an expansionistic victory or even a magic victory if you can bring up enough knowledge and spell power for that. Simply because you're so good at uh, turtling up and defending yourself. The three cities that you need for either the expansionistic or magic victory are quite easy to defend with that uh, with that culture now then let's hop on over to the uh, to the number six so there is another thing that i want to point out here it's easy to overlook you got a special feature when you have the tier three town hall by now costs 20 percent less this makes this faction even more efficient with the synergy of gold basically when you got gold and production you can speed up the production of your cities even more because you can just uh, buy everything basically faster due to that this is really really powerful i can only assume it works for unit recruitment as well i i haven't tested it yet but in a nutshell as soon as your city has a tier 3 town hall you can boost up its building production with gold even more effective this is more something for the mid and late game when you are able to just uh, plant out a new city and give it those um, population units with Imperium quickly and those town halls quite quickly. But at that point, the industrious nation is faster than anybody able to just uh, whip out a city out of nothing and just pay for those buildings. It's something to keep an eye on and it's quite powerful. So let's get on over to number seven. Another nifty thing about these guys. So you start with a tier one guard and a tier one archer. The archers of these guys are something special as they all have the overdraw crossbow skill, which is breaking defense modes, cancels, retaliations, and is only countered by charge resistance. Basically, these guys are shooting a cavalry attack. They are basically like a, like a charge unit that can just shoot a projectile to destroy the enemy's stance. The real problem with that though is it needs all three action points. So that means it does require quite some forethought to uh, use it into an enemy army that's just uh, going into you. But it is... The only way that I know of to break stances out of a distance with a nice damage that comes really cheap. You know, these guys, they just cost 60 gold. That makes it, with enough obelisks, it's really hard to use defensive stances against these guys properly. Just wanted to point that out, that you got a really cheap stance breaker at your disposal. Downside is just, just the uh, strategic forward planning for these three points to apply, but beyond that, it's amazing. Okay, so number eight, let's talk about a downside, the most vicious downside of these people. You're lacking upfront DPS. You know, you don't do much damage right from the bat because your damage motors, they are all meant about getting smacked first or buffing yourself first up and then transforming that into damage. So 
unlike other factions that are just able to kick you in the face just because they they live these guys always need some preparation some times to prepare for all these things you will never be able to just blitz into the face with the industrious civilization like with other ones but this is only a small downside because i say i, I want to emphasize upfront damage per turn you know after a couple of turns these guys can churn out massive amounts of damage and be very resilient at the same time so these guys are really good at long combats but they are not that good at short burst trades which brings me up to number nine which fits in really really well into that whole thing let's talk about weaknesses a little bit more because there is one thing worth mentioning your guards lots of defense almost no resistance same goes or, well no resistance same goes for the obelisk they have physical resistance, but they have no magical resistance. The tier 2 guys here, although they finally have some, and they also reflect damage, which is really amazing. Your spear units reflect damage. It's something worth mentioning at all. But um, here again, we have only a rating of 2. And the steel shapers are your best bet for resistance. And the bastions, they come also with a relatively high Physic with a very high physical but a relatively low resistance so in a nutshell this is your weak side magic attacks are your weak side if you are facing magic attackers have your steel shapers around because grant defense also bolsters uh, oh sorry also only bolsters these I'm, I'm wrong um you need to have something to bolster up the resistance be it spells or other units or it's just getting hit by that but here again the first hit will be the hardest until the bolstered defenses kick in and increase the resistance yet again just keep in mind magic species magic cultures are the strongest against you whereas people that rely on physical damage have a really really hard time and you can roll over them very very early on without too many problems i I have seen it so often in uh, in combats that a simple tier one guard unit. Oh, don't have it here. Ah, uh, yeah. A, sim a simple tier one guard unit will just take one to two damage per blow, and it's quite ridiculous to see when you see, when you notice that these guys have lots of HP, and you can just slap up temporal temporary HP with healing effects. It's amazing. So, in a nutshell, keep your guys alive against magical damage. Keep that thing in your mind maybe get some preparations against that too via tomes via additional troops whatever might be the case this is your weak side number 10 is now a little bit about synergies while we're at it so i personally think that these guys combine extremely well with all strategies that are around buffing you know unit enchantments everything that makes your unit even more than it already is is really really cool you went here for earthkin already but there are several things you could go for astral spellbook for nature and materium spellbooks but basically every form of buffing is so well received on these guys i personally see the industrious faction offering the some of the best frames for enchanting like the bastions they are quite underwhelming at up front Decent damage, good defense, high HP, but they're just hard to kill. But add in some really, really nasty enchantments and stuff like that, they become killing machines that are hard to kill at the same time. But you always will need those additions. Or you go the other way around, you use your defensive qualities and hire some DPS special specialists from other factions, be it via tomes or other or, or other civilizations. It's up to you. You have options. You can opt into other civilizations like the Dark Civilization offers really good damage dealers. Barbarians do so too. Whatever you pick, just either emphasize your defensive side even more by providing extra buffs and whatnot or just try for or you can go for a more balanced approach where you utilize the defensive strengths of your native culture and bolster it up with dps threats from other sources all right i have nothing more to add for the moment i'm pretty sure the longer i'll play these guys the more i'll find out so let me know what you guys thought leave a comment down below if you have anything to add anything to correct sometimes i mess up uh, I, I miss up things that's 
human nature. I'm really happy that you guys have a keen eye out on these things. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Consider subscribing. I'd be delighted if you did. And check out the, the description box down there. I have more Age of Wonders tutorials and tip lists there. So if that tickles your fancy, just check out the playlist. And last but not least, a big thanks to all the supporters of this channel. You guys are amazing and make a lot of things possible. I truly, truly appreciate. And if you want to check out and know more, there's links to PayPal, Patreon, buy me a coffee, and I'd be super grateful if you'd give them a look. And if not, take my thanks for bearing with me through an annoying and boring ad roll. You are really, really a gay person that I admire because, you know, ads are boring, but whatever. Thanks for watching. Hope you're coming again and see you next time.